Hi, this is The Advisor with Stacey Chalemi, founder of The Complete Herbal Guide. And today I'm very excited because we have a professional uh, person who is just outstanding. And his name is Ravi, and he is in the spirituality um, industry where he helps people connect with their mind, body, and soul. And today he has some really good pointers. We're going to talk about stress, and we're going to talk about end in worry. And, and he has some great things to tell us about that. So before we start, Ravi, can you tell us a little about yourself and what you do? And um, let's take it from there. Sure, sure. Miss Stacy, uh, thank you for having me. What an honor to be to visiting to be visiting with you and talking to you. Uh, I love forward look forward to talking about all these points that you have mentioned. There is a lot of stress uh, that we face in our modern world. So let's let's talk about that. Uh, for your listeners, my name is Ravi Kathuria. I am the author of the non-religious spirituality book, Happy Soul, Hungry Mind. It is about modern spirituality. It's about practical spirituality. So I'm the author of the book. But uh, if somebody asks me who I am, really, I'm just a student of spirituality on my journey from my mind to my soul. It's the most important journey for all of us in this life is the journey from our mind to our soul. And when we experience our own soul, that's when our life gets transformed. So I'm on that journey uh, and all of us are on that journey. So we're together, companions of each other uh, on this journey. So thank you again for having me, Miss Stacy. Appreciate it. Uh, looking forward to this discussion. Oh, you're very welcome. You know, I think a lot of people, you know, have a difficulty with um, connecting the mind, body, and soul. You know, you hear people talk about it. You hear people talking about mindfulness. You hear people, you know, talking about the importance of making the connection. But I don't think people understand uh, the importance, the real importance of making the mind, body, and soul, that ha having that connection and what it can do for us. Can you tell people about why it is so important that we make the connection with our mind, body, and soul? Yes, yes. Great question. Thank you. You know, so let's let's talk about the mind. Let's talk about the mind. Since we are born, and even you watch and observe this among toddlers, uh, their mind is very active, right? They're, they want stuff and they can throw a tantrum. And you can see a toddler is already has likes and dislikes, right? has mm -hmm. uh, has fears and, and and wants some enjoyment, right? And so from very young age, we are used to the mind driving us and controlling us, right? And mm -hmm. we, we go through our entire lives doing that. We serve this master and it endlessly wants more. It never gets satisfied. Right. You know, which is actually where the, the title of my book, Hungry Mind, comes from is hungry is not so much as it is curious mind. It's a mind. It's a, it's a master who is never satisfied. No matter how much you achieve, the yeah. mind says, but well, that was great. You did that yesterday. What are you going to do for me today? And he goes, well, I'm exhausted accomplishing all of this. And the mind goes, yeah, but I'm, I'm already tired of that. I'm already used to that. You, you bought this beautiful car. Now I want the next car. You bought this beautiful home. Now I want a bigger home. You made so much money on the stock market. Well, that's last year's story. How are we going to double it this year? Right. And so right. the mind wants, uh, and people are going through, you know, I, I, I meet couples who are uh, tr not able to conceive and they want a baby badly. Right. And so then they then they become pregnant. Then they can't wait for the pregnancy to be over. Then the baby is born. They can't wait for the baby to grow up. Then it's toddler, right? And so it's we're always waiting for the next phase of life. And the mind constantly drives that. Yeah. So when you look at the mind, body, soul uh, balance and experience, one thing that we have to realize is that we are not the mind. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. And many, many authors and spiritual leaders have talked about that and to differentiate ourselves from the mind. And yeah. so if we are not the mind, then what is our relationship to the mind? Right. We're actually the owner of the mind. Yes. The mind is not our master. We are the master of the mind. So in my book, I use this example of, you know, somebody walking their dog. And some masters have trained their dog 
to walk behind them to to make sure that the dog understands who the master is. Mm-hmm. Other uh, masters, the dog is leading, and the dog is in full belief that that dog is the master, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. And then the human being is following them because they. Uh, and uh, the mind is the same way. We have to we have to train our sa- mind. We have to discipline ourselves where we become the master of our minds because the truth is and i say this the mind can be our best friend or it can be our own worst enemy yes i agree right the mind our own mind can drive ourselves crazy our own mind can make us obsess our own mind can make us jealous and greedy and then it takes us for a spin it's like running after that dog that is completely out of control or if if the mind was a tiger then hanging on to the tiger by its tail and not right. riding the tiger and controlling it right so the yeah. mind and it happens to all of us it happens to the best of us uh we get hurt you right we have a series of uh, failures and so you would have heard this expression you know the lows are never quite as low as people think they are and the highs are never quite high as, as people think they are, right? And so yeah. when we are riding success, we get arrogant, right? Um, our our head becomes bigger than, than others can handle it, right? And when right. we are down, we begin to completely lose faith in ourselves, lose confidence. We think we're no good. We can never achieve, right? And so yeah. this cycle keeps growing, this roller coaster ride, right? And what is happening is that the mind accentuates it, amplifies the situation and completely takes us in our grip and controls us. And we become slaves to the mind and it's a roller coaster ride. Yes. And so in life, we have to recognize that, that we are not the mind. I, every human being is the owner of the mind and you manage the mind. So I, 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 I have shared this in previous videos. I say, look, when you when you're angry, when you're really upset, uh, instead of saying, "I am upset," what you should say is, "My mind is upset." Yes. My mind is angry. My mind is really depressed. My mind has become really arrogant. And when you begin to say that, just that little phrase change, it begins to distance you from the mind, and you say, "Well." If the mind is really, really upset, if the mind is really depressed, maybe, just maybe, I could have some influence on the mind and suggest to it, channel it. So I say, look, I know you're upset. It's okay. I know you're really unhappy because you lost the love of your life. I understand that. It's okay. We have to pick ourselves up, oh, mind. And I know, and you know, and it happens not just the love of their lives. Uh, um, I know somebody who lost their dog recently, right? And they're, I mean, they're feeling the grief, right? Right. Forget, forget dealing with the grief of a loved one, a loved person, right? I mean, their dog is part of their family, and they're they're going through that, right? Yes. Now it's not. I'm, I'm not a dog owner, so I should be careful. Dog owners would would be upset with me. You know, you can get a new dog, right? And and ultimately, it's very difficult to replace a loved person, right, who, who is gone. But you can get a new dog in your life and you can rebuild. But we have to get to that point. We have to get to that point. We have to tell the mind, look, I know we're missing the dog. I know we're missing. And my, my book, um, one of the, you know, the, the main character goes through a tragic, and it's the same thing. The, the book starts with that. And it's um, it's very difficult to deal with grief. But uh, we, unfortunately, I, I wish it was, I wish the world was not designed that way. Yes. But I cannot change that. I wish I could change that. Uh, someday I will have a conversation with someone really important about that and ask <laughs> why the world was designed. But I cannot change that. The only thing that I can change is help people recognize that even in those moments of grief, how to manage the mind, because I talk about this in the book, is the the mind takes us through this uh, wash and rinse cycle, right? 
Yes. It puts us in the in the uh, washing machine and it constantly, endlessly, the video keeps playing, right? And the guilt and the regret and all of that. And and the the tragedy aside, the mind harasses us, tortures us endlessly, right? Never stops. And we have to break that cycle. We have to tell the mind, look, something terrible, really terrible has happened. And I'm, you know, we should be different. But you, the mind has to stop torturing me endlessly. Yes. And then you begin to come out of that. So we, you know, we have talked about, but you know, that the, that's the you know the challenging side of life. But even the the good side of life, we talked about this is, you know, you when you have a lot of success, things go to your head, and uh, your personality changes, right? And so we have to we have to be watchful. We have to we have to understand how the mind works, because all of us in life are looking for happiness. Whether we realize it or not, we're looking for happiness. Unfortunately, we're looking for happiness through all the material things. We're looking for more money, more fame, more reputation, more friends, more love, right? All to satisfy the mind. And one challenge that we have about chasing happiness in the material world is that the mind uh, never is satisfied. We talked about that. But also the mind can change its preference, right? So you married your uh, high school sweetheart and you've been married for 30 years and suddenly you wake up one day and you say, what happened? And you say, well, the love is gone. And you go, how can you, how can you, you know, this is your sweetheart. Nobody forced you. You married and you, you know, presumably had a family, had great experience. You say, you know, did you have a bad experience? Did you have an argument? No, no, no. Everything is good. I, I, you know, I'm still fond of that person, but I'm no longer in love. And you go, well, how is that? And it's because the mind has changed preference. I know of students who worked very hard through high school and college to become a doctor and then one morning they 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 woke up and realize that's not what they want to do. Mm -hmm. And to the to the shock of their parents who have put all this money and uh, friends and relatives, right, who were counting on them, yeah. suddenly they say, I I I cannot do this. I don't want this. Mm -hmm. And the mind can change its preference. And so we have to be careful, right? I mean, it, it I, I was giving this example, some, you know, we work very hard to buy a nice fancy house, a big house. And then five years later, you're sick of the house because you go, oh, this is too big. I cannot manage it. I hate this house. And you go, well, <laughs> five years ago, you worked so hard. That was your only desire. If only, oh, only if I could get this house, only if I could get this house, right? You competed with so many other people who were... Uh, trying to to buy the house right and you were just ecstatic when you when you were able to buy it and you moved in and five years later the same house the house has not changed your relationship with the house has changed your preference the mind goes uh -huh, I don't want this anymore right and so you have to be careful you have to watch that and say okay I work so hard to satisfy the mind I work so hard to get that house it can change its preference. So my happiness is really held hostage by the mind. How do I really become happy in life without my happiness being subject to the whims and fancies of the mind? Now that, Miss Stacy, is the ultimate question of life. Right. That is what people have to think because we're chasing happiness. We chase happiness through, like I said, love, friends, um, but even friendships come and go. So then you say, okay, where do I get this permanent happiness? How can I be permanently happy? Can I be permanently happy no matter what the mind wants? And yes. So in Happy Soul, Hungry Mind, the, this non-religious spirituality book, I talk about permanent happiness lies beyond the mind. You have to understand that you have to go around it. 
Because if you spend all your life serving this mind, it will always leave you a little bit dissatisfied. It might change its preference and constantly keep you on your toes. But to achieve this permanent, a more longer lasting happiness, you have to go around the mind. You have to make the mind completely quiet. And if you do that, if you make the mind completely quiet, something magical happens within you that is completely natural and that is automatic. And that magic, that wonderment that exists in you, when that unfolds, that's when you have truly arrived and are living the best life that you can have. So is it basically focusing more on your heart than your mind? Because I feel like the heart, for me personally, the heart is really where all the answers are. If we connect with our heart, our heart will lead us to the answers and will tell our mind what we really need and what we really want. Do you agree with that? So let me say this. I know we 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 talk about the heart, but the mind has uh, many aspects to it, right? Mm -hmm. So it has the mind, which is the thought processes. It has the intellect, right? Um, yeah. Which is the discerning power. You know, you say, well, what is my conscious? It's your intellect, which says, this is the right thing to do. This is not, this is a dumb thing to do because the mind is impulsive. Yes. The mind is impulsive. It wants to go and and buy, you know, you're in the in the in the store and it it wants to buy that expensive bag, right? And the intellect goes, well, you got three of these already. What is the fourth one going to do? But the mind goes, no, no, no. It sounds so beautiful, right? And look, they 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 dropped it ten percent. So you go, well, we we bought it cheap. You know, the intellect goes, we bought it cheap. You know, less expensive somewhere else. But the mind goes, no, no, no. I just want it. I just want it. I just want it, right? And it can override. So we, we have that. We have the impulsive part. We have the intellect part. We have the intuition part, right? Uh, so we also have intuition, which comes in. And, and when we are quiet, that intuition speaks to us, right? And we say, well, there is an inner deep voice, right? So we have the impulsive layer. We have the intellect. We have then the intuition is the deeper inner voice, right? And so when you talk about the heart, is this intuition, right? Because you go, all right, what is it? What is it that is coming from within me, right? And it's is the subconscious layers. And what happens is your heart, uh, you know, when we are in love or when we are, um, we are dejected in love, we feel the emotions in the heart, right? Mm -hmm. When we are in fear, when we are um, afraid, we feel it in the stomach area, right? So you yes. feel it in your in your gut, right? So it's the mind as it feels fear, as it feels love, different organs in the body will respond to that, okay? Yes. But it all comes back to the mind. It all comes back to the mind and what it is thinking, what it is feeling, right? So yes, you feel it in the heart, but it's back to the mind on, on how it is... Um, how it is assessing the situations, how it is reacting to the situations, and what its expectations are, right? What yeah. its expectations are, because uh, you and your friend, um, right, could have the same experience, but its impact on you could be very different, right? Right. It's, it's amazing where, you know, people can go through the same experience, but they're impact on them could be very different based on their experience, based on their history, based on their personality, right? And so the mind is controlling that. And then uh, based on that reaction that they're feeling, different body parts, different body organs will, will, um, will be affected. And that's where you will feel it, right? That's where you will feel it. So we, I, I go back to, we have to, if we are going to make progress in life, where we need to watch our minds. We need to understand how the mind works. We need to understand what makes our mind happy. 
We need to understand what makes our mind unhappy. Uh, you know, maybe I was going this example to someone. I said, look, you know, maybe you had a grandfather whom, who loved you very much. And when you were a teenager, grandfather wrote you a beautiful letter on how smart you are and how much um, faith and confidence your grandfather had in your ability to, to do well in life. And, and what an encouraging letter he wrote, right? Mm -hmm. And um, 20 years go by and that letter is sitting somewhere, right? Mm -hmm. And your mind has forgotten about it. <laughs> and you're cleaning your drawers and you come across the letter and you read this letter, right? You knew it existed, your mind, your, but you read it and suddenly the mind gets energized all over again. Right. Something that happened 20 years ago and your grandfather is gone now, but that letter can get the mind going again. Right. So there yeah. are ways you have to understand what that letter most happen. Most people will not recognize that they're suddenly in, in a better mood and they feel they can go and achieve a lot more. Suddenly they have a new energy. They say, I have what happened? Ravi, you seem to have a lot of new energy. Say, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I feel I can do it. I feel I can accomplish. I was struggling with it, right? Right. And I forget that I wrote my, uh, I read my grandfather's letter last week and that completely changed my perspective, right? Yes. And it's because the mind suddenly got, um, you know, diverted in, in that direction. And so we have to start understanding what gets us high in our minds and also what gets us low. You know, some of us are more, vulnerable more sensitive to what others say we get up in the morning and we see an email and that email is not necessarily derogatory but it didn't quite you know uh applaud us or celebrate us or recognize us maybe it's a, a email from the boss right. and did not actually acknowledge us completely oh that's it that that just small thing and maybe the boss was busy or god knows whatever right Right. By that email. But that can have such an impact on us. And suddenly for three days, you know, and God forbid that happens on a Friday, your weekend is now gone. <laughs> right? Because it's playing. You go, whoa, whoa, what it's is playing, this? Why, yeah. why did I? Right? And so you have to understand how this mind is playing with you, right? And then you go to the you go to Monday and, and the boss says, Oh, by the way, I you know, I should have written the email. I really should have acknowledged you more explicitly. And you go, oh, yeah. <laughs> But you have just wasted three days of your life that I can never give you back. So what does a person do then? What does a person do when they have those negative thoughts? How do they separate them from the mind and focus on those positive thoughts? How do they get rid of them? Yes, yes. Great question, Miss Stacy. Great question. It's to be vigilant, right? Mm -hmm. So we all have to understand. Some people are more vulnerable than others. If I'm a vulnerable person, if I get affected by that, then I have to put my guard up, right? Mm -hmm. It's like I have a home and I have walls and windows to protect me from the elements, right? Yes. Because I know I, I live in New Jersey and it can snow a lot. <laughs> or I live in Texas and it can become hot a lot, right? Yes. So I, I create a protective environment. Everybody does. If we didn't have that protective environment, we, you know, we, we, we live now in fancy homes. But the basic purpose of the house is to protect us from the elements. Yes. And we need to start creating that around our um, our mental. We need to create our mental home, right? And say, okay, yes, I could, I could receive an email like that or I could be at work or a friend could put me down and that can affect me, right? And they may they may not really come out and say, well, you're you know you're a terrible person. Just just small cues. I I am very sensitive to that, right? And so then you start reminding yourself, and you said, look, I I know I'm sensitive to that. So one, either um, I stop reading emails in the morning. There are a lot of people who have realized that the first thing they should not do is get up and read the news or read their emails, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, in news, you know, in news, if you read, if you watch the news, most of the time the news is all about bad stuff, mm -hmm. right? And so if you watch that constantly, it's going to affect you. So, you know, maybe watch it, you know, if you want to catch up with news, then watch it later in the day, but not first thing in the morning. Mm -hmm. Don't read your emails, right? Uh, settle down, calm yourself down, and then show yourself up and, and then watch that. And then 
you know, if you're dealing with people who are, <clears throat> you know, some people, some friends of your good friends, well-meaning friends may have a habit of putting others down, right? They, they make yes. this smart quips. They're constantly, right? And they feel good about themselves, right? Because they think they're being witty, oh. not yeah. recognizing because they're not, they're not sensitive to how the other person is, is responding, right? Correct. And it can also happen, you know, those of us who are really sensitive sometimes can be very insensitive to others. It's just amazing, right? Yes. I can be very sensitive. I say, oh, please don't talk about it. But I'm happy to go talk about others, right? All the time. Right. Mm -hmm. And you go, well, excuse me, if you're that sensitive, why are you being insensitive to others? But we don't make the connection. We don't make the connection, right? And so you go, okay, all right. I am very sensitive. I get affected. I have to either start building a little distance from those people if I cannot handle it till I'm able to become stronger or I have to remind myself that is their nature. I cannot change them, right? Right. What I can change is is consciously observing that that quip is not making me feel good and you stop it right there in their tracks. Now, you know, I, I promise you it's not going to be easy and you're not going to be perfect and stopping all the quips. But if you watch it, what will happen is if it was going to have you a 100% impact because you have now conscious about it, it will have an 80% impact on it. And over time, it will have a 60% impact. And so what happens is you become stronger and stronger. I met a, I met a young man recently. Um, he lost both his parents, right? Uh, mm -hmm. One to, you know, uh, pair, you know, father has left him and, and mother he's no longer uh, able to be in proximity and that young man has such a mature take on life right because he has gone through so much in life already right right yeah. some of us who have older who have not yet gone through that we are we are more vulnerable right mm -hmm. it's very difficult to face him you say okay what well, this is going to happen he goes right Mm -hmm. He says, okay, well, whatever, but, you know, how do I, you know, okay, well, whatever, right? Yeah. But somebody else who has not seen seen hardships is more vulnerable, right? But yeah. it's, it's the same thing as life is teaching us and all these challenges exist. And we have to keep reminding ourselves that life is a roller coaster ride. I wish I could take all the pains away in life, but they exist. I wish I could take the challenges away. Yes. I cannot. All I can tell you is, and all I would pray for you, and for myself, I, I'm right. in this. It's not as if I have achieved, right? We're all in this together. Yes. Is how do we deal with life situations? Yeah. How do we protect ourselves? And that's where spirituality comes in. Spirituality is the buffer. It's the protective gear that we can wear. And then we can go about life and life will not affect us. Now you talk about, you know, life is a roller coaster ride. And you mentioned that we all go through obstacles and with obstacles comes stress and comes anxiety and sometimes depression. If we yes. let it, if we let it go. <clears throat> now yes. you had mentioned that you created 18 steps to help people decrease their stress and to get yes. their worries and to help them get through life. Can you share some of those with us? And teach yes. Them? Sure. No, thank you for asking about that. There is a video that I've done on YouTube on 18 steps to reduce stress and anxiety. I hope your um, audience will take the time to watch it. But, you know, the to begin with, and let me say this, we are all living in the in the modern world, right? We have we are constantly bombarded with uh, work and busyness and errands. We never can almost we never have a moment to slow down, right? We never yes. can catch up. It's almost like we're constantly running, right? Yes. Either because you're at work or if you're, even if you're, um, um, you know, somebody who's who's managing the house, he or she, because even managing the house these days is, is I mean, it's a chore, right? Yes. Things constantly breaking. You have to deal with people. You have kids to deal with and, you know, family to take care of. We are constantly pushing ourselves. 
we're kind of, that's the society, right? We want more and we push ourselves. And, and then in all of this, we want to squeeze in three vacations and then that vacations are more stressful. And you go, oh my God, I want to get home from this vacation. And you get home from the vacation. And people say, I want, a, I want a vacation from the vacation. What kind of a crazy life we are living? I shouldn't say crazy life. That sounds judgmental. The, that is the life we are living, right? Yes. And we are, you know, we, we uh, you know, people, people, when they are in school, I go to kids in school. I say, what do you want? Nobody says happiness. Kids in college want money. Yeah. They say, oh, we want money. As soon as I graduate, I want money. Mm -hmm. I want money. Not, I have not heard one of them say happiness. And that makes me. That makes me sad because as society, we have said that we have we have brainwashed our kids, we have brainwashed ourselves yes. to constantly push ourselves, to constantly push ourselves. And what happens is I have I am an executive coach. I have coached many senior executives, CEOs included. I find that they have been doing that to themselves for 20, 30 years, 40 years. Yeah. And that stress has always been there. So I use this example in the book is, and it's not my example. I've heard it from my brother-in-law is that if you, if you hold a glass of water for a minute, nothing happens. You hold it for half an hour. It gets a little uncomfortable. You hold it for 12 hours. Your arm is going to fall off. <laughs> right. It's yeah. the same glass of water. And so we continue to keep this stress, carry this stress for 10, 20, 30 years, right? And that's when it becomes chronic stress. Mm -hmm. And chronic stress, stress is still something that we take and then it translates into anxiety. Yes. Where it becomes involuntary stress. Mm -hmm. But I'm no longer, I could be sitting in the park and I could get an anxiety attack. And you go, well, what happened? You're sitting in a park, you're beautiful, you know, you're watching ducks and and swans in the in the lake and you go but i'm getting an anxiety attack you said that something bad happened did you read an email in the morning he goes no but i'm getting an anxiety attack and you go well why are you getting an anxiety attack i cannot explain it right you're right. getting it because it's un involuntary the subconscious has been collecting the stress for years and decades and something in there is triggering it, and that is showing up as anxiety. And anxiety is uncontrollable, right? You have to yes. then take severe steps, right? Mm -hmm. So what you have to do is people don't realize that they have stress. They are carrying stress. The very first step that people need to see is acknowledge that there is a problem. Yes. Acknowledge that I am carrying stress around, mm -hmm. that I am carrying, I have this weight on me. Right. That acknowledgement must come because then you're aware of the problem. If you're never aware of the problem, all these steps that I might have listed, they're useless because you go, well, I don't have a problem. Well, if you don't have a problem, you don't need the solution. Right. You have to acknowledge that you have a problem, that you have this stress and that stress. And people say, well, you know, I get so many people and, and they argue with me and they push back and they say, well, you know, some amount of stress is good. Yes. Right. Some about some amount of stress is, is good uh, if that stress is for a limited time. Yes. If the stress is continuous and constant, yes, that stress will kill you. I shouldn't say it as in such dark terms. No, but right? it will destroy you. But if it may not kill you, but I promise you, your quality of life is going to be compromised. You may have the best life. You may be a billionaire. I don't care. And if you watch Miss Stacy and any your audience will agree with me. You watch some of these billionaires. They have all the money in the world. You watch how they behave and react and you can tell these are very stressed, highly stressed people. Right. These are people who have so much stress. They wake up in the morning. They don't get up and tap their feet and dance around. And say, voila, I have a billion dollars. I can never spend this money in my whole life. You watch them. These people are highly stressed. Yes. You watch them on TV and, and how, how easily they can be, you know, uh, 
They can get irritated how easily they can get inflamed. You go, you are a billionaire. Why do you have stress? Right. All of us, the 99% people on earth want to get to your status. We want a billion dollars, right? Mm -hmm. But if that's how you are going to be after having a billion dollars, then the rest of us are just fools. Right. Why is it that billionaires? And so I, I have done this quote on, on my Instagram feed. I ask the question, I say, are billionaires the happiest people on earth? And if not, why not? What is this society that I have created and these pressures that I have created? If billionaires cannot be happy, then why the rest of us are, are trying to emulate them and trying to earn that kind of money? Right. Who are the happiest people on earth, right? But so I, I'm, you know, getting back to stress. Billionaires have stress. CEOs have stress after all the success. I have coached CEOs and oh my God, the amount of stress that they have is just amazing. And the reason they bring me in is to reduce their stress mm -hmm. because the stress is affecting, forget the quality of life. These people are, are so motivated. They don't even see quality of life, but the quality of their decisions. Right. And that stress is affecting the organization and its right. performance. That is where I go in and I say, excuse me, what you're doing, that stress that you have been carrying around that you have not realized for 30 years mm -hmm. has affected you. It's affecting your relationships at work, how it, it's affecting your leadership style, and you don't even realize it. So we're carrying stress. So whether it's executives or whether it is uh, a high school student, high school students, today you watch them have so much stress. Students in college have so much stress. My God, we have we have filled the system with stress. So we all have to acknowledge and say, I have stress and I must do something about it. Right? And one of the things that you should do is share. It's very difficult. You know, women find it very easy to share. I, I, or, you know, I should, I should not say very easy. I should at least say easier to share. Right? Mm -hmm. Men... I find it, it very difficult for them to share with friends or family that they are going through stress. Men have a real problem. Yes. Women do too, but men, I mean, it, it, men is, you know, this is a chronic problem. We have to go out and start sharing. We, we cannot share it with our spouses. We certainly cannot share it with our parents. Oh my God, we'll never get stopped the end of it. We cannot share it with our children. Our children are not interested. When we go to friends, our friends want to see us as, as you know, fun loving guys. They want right. to sit and talk about all of this. So where do I turn? Right? So in my book, it, it, my book is about two, two men. And it, you know, their struggle. And it's it's interesting how they come come around. And begin to peel each other, right? It's very difficult because men are protective. We 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 are not used to, right? And that stress. So I would I would recommend both men and women, uh, and and all genders, to start sharing with someone, right? right. And um, and if you cannot share with a human being, then share with your dog, right? Have a pet. Talk to a tree. Talk to someone. Because your mind, your subconscious doesn't realize who you're talking to. It just feels better that you're talking to someone. Right. I, I'm being a little bit frivolous here, but find a human being, right? Otherwise, go find a stranger. Go somewhere. Go join a support group. Make sure that you are expressing that stress because that will take it a notch down. It won't disappear completely, right? Right. You have to... You have to take it a notch down and you have to tell yourself, I have stress and I'm going to work on this. I will take care of this. And by that affirmation, you are going to find um, your condition improving. Now, you know, the, I talked about chronic stress, which has been there for a long time. But many of us, because we talked about life's challenges, we get hit by extreme situations, right? Mm -hmm. We lose our job. Uh, we have legal problems. We we have health problems. A loved one is in, right? Mm -hmm. Or something is going wrong with us. 
Um, and then the stress is palpable. And we go, you know, uh, weather-related, weather-related incidents have been going up, right? Yes. And so you, you say, well, I, I did not expect this. My house was standing there and I have just gone through this uh, storm and suddenly my house doesn't stand anymore. Right. Right. And you go, wow. That is that is intense amount of stress. And it is a reality. People are facing that. People are getting cancer diagnosis every day. We haven't been able to cure cancer, right? There are other diseases where we're having people who are getting fired. There are layoffs. All kinds of stuffs are happening, right? That is how life is. And that's where we have to start building our perspective. So in the book, I talk about maturing our perspective, right? It's like that young man who has matured his perspective. He has seen the, yeah, I'll call it the ugly side of life, right? right. To lose parents or not have connection with them at your young age leaves an impression, is leaves a dark impression on you, right? But the rest of us have to start preparing. Because, you know, we expect life, life to be rosy. <laughs> and I have not met a person on earth who doesn't expect their life to go just completely smooth. <laughs> right? We all want that. We all want that. We want. We have certain expectations. Not everyone wants to be a billionaire. But whatever you say, well, look, I, you know, I, I can be... Uh, uh, I can be a bus driver, but I want to be able to have my bus driver and, and go home and enjoy my life and have my family. And I want that, right? Right. Everyone wants their level of expectation to be fulfilled. We all want a rosy, comfortable life according to our desires. Yeah, I... I I need to I need to I need to promote myself where I get to get to design a new world, but I cannot. I don't have the powers to promote myself. I am living in this world, and we all are. And the only way that we can we can deal with life is maturing our perspectives and begin to understand that there are no guarantees in life. Yes. There are no guarantees in life. There will be roller coasters. There will be things that will not go according to our expectations, mm -hmm. right? So when an incident happens, when, when, when a stressful incident happens, one thing that we have to do is recognize that the stress is intense and you have to immediately see if you can distance yourself just a little bit right. from that incident. Because the fact is, even though that incident has happened, you still have to go find solutions. Yes. You cannot be, you know, if, you're, if your house got destroyed or if you have a cancer diagnosis, you still have to do something. If you just sit down by the, by the roadside, the house is not going to reconstruct itself. It will not clean itself. It will, you have to do stuff. If you have a cancer diagnosis, you have to go find the best doctor. Because I promise you, you can end up with the wrong doctor and can things get even more complicated and worse, right? So oh, you yeah. have to work hard on, on researching the doctors. There are, unfortunately, I'm sad to say this, there are bad doctors. There are incompetent doctors that we face. There are the unethical doctors, right? They exist. Yes. Like in any profession, right? You mm -hmm. go to, they exist. So you have to make sure that you guard yourself yes. and not get overwhelmed. Because if you get overwhelmed, you are not going to be able to work on the solution. Right. So you have to tell your mind and say, look, this is this is a horribly stressful situation. And and if you and make sure you don't get caught up in that cycle of a, why is it happening to me? Right? What yeah. did I do? Why did it, why is it happening to me? That is not going to get you anywhere. Right. Right. And I have I, 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 I will say this now. I've, I've gotten myself excited. I, I have I have listened to some religious leaders who sell hope. And they say, well, don't worry, you, you know, you, something is going to take care of you. Have faith. It will, you know, no, please don't sell hope. You have you don't need hope. You need to have confidence in yourself mm -hmm. to be able to go and work on the situation and find a solution. 
Because if you are not going to do it, nobody else is going to do it for you. Right. You have to face the situation and then you have to go out and seek help from others. If you're going to sit at home, crawled in a fetus position, praying on hope. Yeah, I, I, I wish I could tell you, I cannot sell you hope. And it's dangerous. Go out and work. No matter how hard the situation is, we all have to work. So if you see intense stress coming, you need to distance yourself from that stress and say, okay, I need to calm myself down so I can work on the solutions, right? Yes. It is absolutely important to do that. And of course, go out and seek help. You know, sometimes we we, we have so much pride. Uh, we, we don't want to go out and seek help. Sometimes we are so dejected in the situation. Uh, we feel it is hopeless. Uh, no. Sooner or later, you are going to have to go out and work hard, right? And I'll, I'll say this. I mean, there, there are 18 steps. So I don't want to go through all of them. Mm -hmm. I would also say this. In your life, learn it is extremely important to create positivity around you. So when you say things, either to others or very importantly to your own self, put them in positive terms. Yes, right? I agree. You know, so people talk about being grateful. What that does is makes you positive. Yes. And you're that same stress. I could have two people who have the exact amount of money, have the same job, same family, same relationship, same exactly absolute twin situations. And the one who sees things positively and creates a little positively will experience that life at a much better level than the other person. Same life, same uh, circumstances, but this person's experience of life will be much better. Right. So we have to be very serious. And and I make the same mistake. And, and uh, my brother and my friends will remind me, right, to say it in a positive way. And so we all have to do it, right? Yes. Right? So I am thankful for what I have. I am thankful for how much I have achieved, right? Yes. Because we are constantly beating ourselves and saying, well, I have not achieved. Well, today I have achieved because I am talking to the great uh, Stacy. <laughs> <laughs> I have arrived, but I could beat myself down and say, well, I waited, you know, 53 years before I got here. Right? <laughs> I, could, I could put it that way or I could say, well... I'm finally talking, right? I have finally made that connection. So there is always a way to look at it from a glass half full. And that's not something that, uh, you know, people say, well, there are some personalities that way. That is a conscious thing. It's it's like we have to, we have to have the discipline and we have to do that, right? Right. We have to, we have to watch the words. We have to watch our language. We have to watch our body language right? And our thinking and our mindsets. And that can reduce stress because you will notice that the people who are, who spread negative negativity or who speak negatively, who are constantly complaining, mm -hmm. stress will affect them more. Yes. I agree. Because the subconscious doesn't understand that you're complaining about, you know, something that is immaterial, that, that is a small thing. The subconscious thinks, well, you're complaining, so something was really going wrong. And you're complaining all the time. Right. You know, you're stuck in traffic. There's nothing you can do about it. Might as well listen to some traffic uh, music and enjoy your... <laughs> right? right. Why are you getting stressed out? The subconscious goes, well, something must be really bad because the subconscious doesn't have eyes and senses, right? So they think, oh, something, you know, this person must really be in a bad situation. And right. that is why we have road rage, right? That is why we have people uh, yeah. who cannot control, you know, they, they don't know the other person. And in 30 seconds, they won't remember that person. Yet, it compels them to stop the car, corner them off, take a firearm, right? How okay. stressed do you have to be? How stressed do you have to be? What chronic level of stress have you been carrying? And that, that you know, it, it, and really somebody cutting you off is you're not going to delay you more than two seconds. 
and for that two seconds you're willing to turn turn upside down your entire life your loved one's life not to mention the other person's life right. and their loved one's life right of course all of this so be be careful on how much you complain be careful on how much negativity you're putting outside create positivity choose your company carefully find the friends who are positive keep the friends i should not say keep the you know discard the friends who are negative but be be cognizant of them yes right keep them at an arm's distance and find the ones who encourage you find the ones who are cheerful find the ones who are positive yes. and whom after meeting you say i, I feel good I, you know that i'm in a bad situation but i feel good after meeting them right yes and men as, as you're coming back after meeting them your mind will start firing off with solutions mm -hmm. and you go yeah maybe i can do that maybe i should try that maybe i should call them maybe i right. should call for this help maybe i should right Right. solutions will come up and only solutions can solve bad situations no other way right yes and so choose those friends or find people there are so many people or listen to people you know the the these days on social media we have so much content available choose your content carefully there are a lot of people who are spewing hate all the time that's right. all they do they have made a big business of spewing hate Yes. You listen to that negativity. You think it's entertaining. I promise you, you're paying a very heavy price by listening to that negativity because it is filtering into your subconscious and yeah. it will affect your life. I promise you, it 100%. is guaranteed. Be very careful on how much negativity you're soaking in. Yes, I agree. 100%. Right? Be very careful on who you listen to. Listen to positivity. Yes. yes. Listen to Stacy. Listen to me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm I'll give you an <laughs> example. Even my my I still remember when my son was little. He had he had put the TV on and there was some type of show on cable and they were battling. And yeah. he was in a dead sleep. And in his sleep, he had his fists and he was punching oh. along. Because yes. his subconscious yes. was still listening to the yes. TV. Yes. So he absorbed the fight and he yes. absorbed the words. And yes. in his subconscious mind, he was part of that battle. So our brain doesn't realize the power. And when we yes. have negativity around yes. us, the absorption of negativity, yes. the words, the actions of people, their energies are yes. all absorbent into us. And it's yes. playing a big role on our health. And people yes. also don't realize that 70% of illness is caused by stress. Yes. So the the yes. the the amount of of negativity in our life, the, uh, the the subconscious that we build inside ourselves, the negativity that we bring on ourselves from work and from other things, it's all playing a toll yes. on our mind, our body, and our soul, and our yes. ability to actually move forward and be productive and to be happiness and to have that happy soul and that happy mind that you are trying to explain. We have to try to, like you said, retrain our mind and focus on a more positive aspect of life, focus on the positive, right? And not, yes, and, yes. To, and to excel and to move away from the negativities. Yes. No, absolutely. And the, which is why I wrote this book, Happy Soul, Hungry Mind, because it is the story of an entrepreneur. And as I shared, he goes through a family tragedy, but he's struggling in his business. He's struggling in his business and you can see he has frustration, right? Mm -hmm. He has anxiety. He has stress because he's living off of, I guess this is a, a, a spoiler alert. He's living off of his wife. You know, I, I, I find with so many people that I've spoken to that own businesses and their, their biggest thing is they get so stressed out and their mind is absorbed continuously in their business because, well, I have to pay this bill. I have yes. to pay that bill. Yes. I have yes. employees to pay. Yes. I have to do this. I have to do that. Yes. And these are nonstop responsibilities that they feel obligated to do. So if they, in order for them to run a positive and a successful business, yes. how do they separate themselves from those stresses? 
Yes, yes, yes. So, so, so this this man Travis, um, you know, I talked about road rage. So in the book, he actually there is an incident of of him cutting him cutting somebody off. You know, chasing somebody in the middle of the night, and because he's completely out of control, mm -hmm. his grief and his frustration with his life and his business, not only to pay make payroll, but not succeeding fast enough. He has certain expectations. They are not meeting met. And both of these, both sides of life coming together to completely crush him, right? Right. And so then he begins to have this conversation with a mentor who he runs into after many years, whom he had lost contact with. And it's a chance meeting. And the mentor begins to help him unravel the amount of stress that he's carrying around. Right? And mm -hmm. then they talk about Finding peace because all of us, every human being, you know, how do we get the antidote to stress? What is the antidote to stress? Because I cannot change the modern world. I cannot change the fact that the bank is going to be there on the first of the month asking for the mortgage payment. And I say, <laughs> look, I was too stressed this month. <laughs> <laughs> I did not make an ordering, please. <laughs> <laughs> the bank... <laughs> will show up. <laughs> That's true. They don't care about your stress. No, right? they don't. I cannot say, well, I don't have rent money. They, they don't care. The landlord is going to show up. If you don't make your car payment, the dealership will come and right. take your car away. You said, well, excuse me. <laughs> I heard to Ravi and Stacy. they said, chill. <laughs> <laughs> they said, if you have a job loss, don't worry about it. <laughs> right? There are realities. There are absolute realities. But, and we have to we have to deal with it. But but like we have talked about, and so this discussion, this unraveling, right, is that the antidote to stress is finding that peace within. Yes. Because we all, this is, you know, human beings, we don't realize it. And 99% of the people on earth don't realize that we have this infinite ocean of peace within us. Yes, we do. It is just lying there. Mm -hmm. And it is mine. It's not somebody else. It is mine. It is mine to claim. Right. The more I am able to dip in this ocean of my peace. Yes. I say, okay, life, throw whatever you want to at me, right? Right. Now, it will not happen that, um, you know, it's, it's like in the ocean. You know, if you have a small boat and there are huge waves and there is a storm, your boat will capsize. Right. But with spirituality and, and by encountering, by experiencing your own peace, your boat becomes bigger and bigger. It becomes an ocean liner. Yeah. And so if there is a storm, it doesn't mean that the ocean liner will not swing, but it will not capsize. Right. You will survive the storm. You will. Right. You will. And so that's what we have to do. We have to strengthen ourselves and we have to, if we get a chance every day, dip into our own ocean of peace. And the more I do that, then the stress, I can just flick away. It will come and yeah. stick to me. But like every morning I take a bath and I wash away the dirt. Right. I dip into my ocean of peace. All the stress will melt away. It's when I'm not dipping into my ocean of peace and that dirt keeps collecting for 30 years. Right. Then... I am completely affected by it because it hardens, right? Yes. I need to dip into my ocean of peace. And that is why spirituality is the universe's most powerful gift to us. It is the most amazing gift to us. And it is a gift that has been given to us so we can live the most best quality of life. Yes. We can experience the most amazing thing, this amazing wonderment. 100%. Can you tell people where they can find your website? Yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Stacey. So please visit happysoulhungrymind.com. Happysoulhungrymind.com. 
hungrymind.com. Uh, there is a lot of content uh, on happysoulhungrymind.com. Uh, some of it is provocative, so I apologize in advance. If, <laughs> <laughs> if you read it and you go, oh, he sounded so nice on the, <laughs> on the call. <laughs> but, you know, in life, you have to be, we, we have to change our thinking. We have to yes. wake up. We and do. then, of course, you can read the book. Uh, you can purchase the book on Amazon uh, or on Kindle. Um, the book, uh, the book is not provocative. The book is uh, shares spiritual truths that can really change our lives. It can transform everyone's lives. And then, um, uh, if you if you're not a reader, then you can watch on YouTube many of the videos that I have. Uh, with the channel is Happy Soul Hungry Mind as well. So, now you're, you're also a speaker. Can you tell people if they are interested after listening to this uh, podcast, if if they want you to come speak with them, how they can contact you? Yes, yes, of course. Please, uh, please contact me and and send me an email at ravi at happysoulhungrymind dot com, and uh, we can be in touch and and we can. I'd love to speak. I uh, I am the the founder and president of the Houston Strategy Forum, where I. Uh, moderate live sessions i have spoken uh, i have the happy soul hungry mind is my second book uh, many years ago i wrote a business book how cohesive is your company so i have spoken to uh, to corporate audiences to mba executive mba students to organizations conferences um so if you if you would like to talk about stress and anxiety if you would like to talk about finding meaning in life, if you want to talk about spirituality and how wonderful spirituality is, what, what is spirituality and how does it, what does it mean to you as an individual and what we are missing out. Yes. You may have achieved a lot in life. You may have a family, you may have made money, you may have made a career. But if you have not started experiencing your spiritual side, and it is non-religious, it doesn't matter whether you are a Hindu or a Christian or a Muslim or a Buddhist or a Jew, or if you're an atheist, you have a spiritual side. Yes, You have this spiritual ability. And I'll say this, it's like every human being born on earth has swimming ability. Mm-hmm. They may not know how to swim, but they have swimming ability. Right. They could have been born in the middle of the Saharan desert. <laughs> and all the all the, 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 the maximum amount of water they have seen is in an oasis where they get enough to drink and, and bathe. And that's it. Right. Right. They were going swimming, but they have swimming ability. Everyone has swimming. Ability. Everyone has spiritual ability without exceptions, without judgment. Yeah. If you want to get in touch with your spiritual side, please call me. Yeah, uh, That is the most beautiful thing that you can do for yourself. More beautiful than anything else you have done in life. And you do one-on-one -on -one coaching as well also, correct? Yes, yes, yes. Can they get in contact with you through the same email? Yes, please. Ravi, R-A-V as in Victor I, R-A-V-I at happysoulhungrymind.com. Yes, I'm happy to help. I'm here to help. And uh, we all need help. We're all in this together. We're 100%. all in this together. Um, so, yeah, let's let's make progress. Let's all oh, of us make progress. And, and let us help each other. Yeah, please. The world will be a better place if they, we do. Yes, 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 absolutely. Thank you so much, Ravi, for being on the show. You have gave us a world of information. And I think many listeners are going to benefit from this podcast. Thank you so much for taking the time to share with us and give us your, your information and your input and your advice on spirituality and relieving stress. Thank you. I hope, I hope it helps people. I hope they find it of value and I hope they pay attention. Miss Stacy, thank you so much for giving me the opportunity. What an honor. Oh, uh, thank you. To be on your show. Thank you thank so you. much. You have thank a great day. You too. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you.